I don't mind at all being called that. I think that we're living in a society that, uh, to a large extent, is pop. I think it's one of the facets of, of our society, and it's one of the facets of the present society which is new, and one of the facets that, that hasn't existed before. But it's made, in a way, partially a new landscape for us in the way of, of billboards and uh, neon signs and all the stuff that we're very familiar with, and uh, also literature and uh, television, radio. So that almost all of the uh, landscape, all of our environment seems to be made up partially of a desire to, to sell products. Um, this is the landscape that I'm interested in portraying, and I'm also not only portraying it, but I'm working in the style of it, or uh, a style which at least parodies the style of everyday art and everyday society. I'm interested in portraying uh, a sort of anti-sensibility that pervades the society, and uh, a kind of uh, maybe gross oversimplification. I'm, I use that more as style than as actuality. I re really don't think that art can be uh, gross and oversimplified and, and remain uh, art. I mean, it must have subtleties and it must have, it must uh, sort of yield to a kind of uh, aesthetic unity, otherwise it's not uh, uh, in the realm of art. It's something else, probably. But I think that uh, using it as a style, I think it gives it a kind of brutality and maybe hostility uh, that is useful to me in an aesthetic way. I don't mean that, that industrialization is attempting to be hostile, that's not the point, but um, a, the, the aggressiveness is aggressive to the point of hostility, I think, and it's this kind of thing which can, um, which I think forms or crystallizes into a, a kind of style, and um, it's that sort of anti-sensibilities anti and conceptual appearance of the work that interests me and um, is my subject matter. The new sensibility that I'm trying to bring to it is apparent anti-sensibility, but it is a new sensibility. I think that's the important part of it. It's not, probably not so much that um, it is apparent anti-sensibility, but it's a new sensibility. It's a modern sensibility. Instead, say, of thick and thin paint, which might be the European sensibility, uh, I'm using flat areas of color as opposed to dotted areas, which uh, imitate uh, bend a dots in printing and become an industrialized texture rather than what we're familiar with as a paint texture. Uh, so that by juxtaposing two kind of commercial textures together, I'm, I'm really involved in a relationship between texture in this instance, as well as color and the other things, uh, but that it's a modern industrial texture and it's not uh, one that is nostalgic uh, or that re uh, refers back to uh, European painting or American painting up to now. rather careful not to ha to get the painting textured or to have it look worked on and rearranged. I, I try to do it so that it appears as though this was only done once and that I knew exactly what I was going to do uh, right from the start and it, it was just sort of a question of filling in the lines. But uh, paintings uh, rarely work out this way and generally take some kind of rearranging. Uh, but I, I sort of work it out almost in a mechanical way uh, to begin with. I think that whatever uh, approach one uses, that he ought to go as far as he can with it in order to make it have as much impact as possible. And I think the one that I've chosen seems to lead toward a kind of uh, brutal and antiseptic quality. So since I'm working in this area, I would try to push that style as far as I can. I have worked in other ways and at any time tried to push um, the feeling, whatever feeling it was I had, uh, uh, just as far as I could in the painting. Most of the painting that I've done is sort of a matte finish. That's one kind of industrial texture, but I, I kind of got interested in very glossy surfaces, which would uh, be even more sanitary, I think, and remind one of um, sort of hospital corridors or lunch counters or whatnot.
Well, I've used this Rolex plastic uh, because it has a three-dimensional quality. Uh, the surface is reticulated and forms sort of a lens whereby um, with a change of light or a change of movement, the background will, will seem to change. And um, it seemed to lend itself very well to landscapes because it's reminiscent of the sky, which would change, but it's also reminiscent of a kind of commercial handling of uh, sky. It might be a way to make a, a beautiful sky that would stop your eye as you went by a store. So it has a kind of commercial aspect as well as a beautiful one. But it also plastics themselves being uh, modern materials and uh, associated with industry and so forth and not <laughs> reminiscent of past art. I found they're very uh, sympathetic to my own use and I've used them uh, pretty much for landscapes. I started uh, to try to do paintings in epoxy paint and had difficulty working with it. The idea occurred to me that I could have them uh, porcelain enameled on steel as the uh, subway signs are, are made. So I tried to find a factory that would work along with me, and um, the idea of getting into an industrial process itself was interesting to me. Then from this, uh, we found that we could easily make uh, three-dimensional objects, uh, which I could fabricate in cardboard and make um, two-dimensional plans on paper, and the factory would execute these. Most of these were explosions, although some were landscapes. Then I got interested in uh, doing things in fully round because uh, these three-dimensional uh, enamels are essentially two-dimensional and uh, looked for some way of doing my uh, image in ceramic. The idea of doing it in ceramic and in three dimensions was particularly interesting to me because the symbols that I used are used uh, to give three dimensional effect on a two dimensional surface. Uh, shadows and uh, lighting that you see in cartooning and in advertisements usually depict the kind of uh, light reflection or shiny surface which tries to make the two dimensional image look um, round. Um, well, let, let's imagine an ad in which uh, cups and saucers are being advertised and on the surface of these in the newspaper we have light and shade which is depicted in, in either flat black marks or in half-tone dots uh, and these half-tone dots uh, represent three dimensions but to put these half-tone dots and these same two-dimensional symbols on an actual three-dimensional surface and to make a cartooned image, the symbols of which seem to be associated, let's say, with a flat, working, two-dimensional surface, was something that interests me quite a bit. Also, the idea of doing, say, a sculpture of cups and saucers in the same material that cups and saucers are done in, in other words, ceramic, was another uh, thing which interested me quite a bit. The heads are a little bit of a different problem because the original heads are not in ceramic. It was another, in a sense, excuse for decorating a surface but a kind of interesting uh, one to me and one that sometimes get into amusing contradictions between what is two-dimensional and what is three-dimensional. It's very hard to say why I started to do um, cartooning. I, I, I began again in 1960, 61 to paint uh, cartoons in still involved in a kind of abstract expressionist format of painting using uh, human, uh, humorous or animated uh, or animal cartoons like Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny and things. Uh, the paintings I don't think were successful at all and I've destroyed most of those uh, paintings. Uh, but in 61, uh, got the idea of trying, of doing one fairly straight where there was where the painterliness which had been in my abstract expressionist paintings was no longer part of the painting and the kind of texture that I would use would be the commercial texture of uh, half-tone dots and flat uh, printed areas. I go through comic books looking for material which seems uh, to hold possibilities for painting both in its uh, visual impact and in the impact of its written message which I rarely make up. I don't think I'd be capable of making them up. Um, but I try to take messages which uh, are a little, which kind of universal or in a way either completely meaningless or so involved that, that um, they become ludicrous. Uh, when I did it, I had no idea that anyone would be interested. In fact, I, I really felt uh, as though no one in the world would look at these because they, they were certainly humorous and, and um, 
I was serious about them as paintings, but certainly recognized the kind of, um, uh, recognized how other people would see these works. I know that my work has been accused of looking like the um, things that I copy, and it certainly does look like the things I copy. And I think a lot of this is that uh, people assume that similar things are identical. But it is that quality, whatever art is, that um, transforms um, the work of art to be something different from the subject matter. And uh, I believe I'm transforming this into something else, or at least that I'm forming art. Uh, there's no way to prove this.